All right, welcome, welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is Elliot and you're watching Rickety Ski Reviews. Today, we're shooting in a little bit different location. Um, my child's braces broke and so I'm getting them fixed. <laughs> but I still wanted to shoot a video today, so I thought, hey, I'll just shoot from my car. You know, apologies for the weird angle. I have a small car and it only shoots up. We'll work with what we've got. Today, I just wanted to answer some questions, I think. Yesterday, I shot a video talking about how many different pairs of skis you should have. I just wanted to take this opportunity to clarify and kind of answer some follow-up questions to that. Now, I think if you want to have a bunch of different pairs of skis, that's totally fine. I've got no problem with that. Feel free to get as many skis as you want. The thing that I've seen, there's this weird idea that like to really enjoy skiing, you have to have at least four or five pairs of skis. And that's the part that I kind of take issue with that I think is nonsense. I think you could have one pair of skis and really enjoy skiing year round. I do think that like ideally you would probably have two, maybe three pairs of skis, but I think people let that get in the way of like, oh, I'm just not going to go today because I don't have the right skis. I think most conditions you can find a way to have fun. So that was kind of my bigger point and just something I want to clarify first. The other question I got from a viewer was, Elliot, how do I know which skis to bring on which day? How do you figure that out? As someone who has X amount of skis, how do you know what skis to bring up for that day? And the answer is that there's no perfect answer to that. Honestly, it's a little bit of luck. It's a little bit of looking at the forecast and just trying to guess. The best way that I can explain it is if I know that there's no forecast for snow, there hasn't been snow for a while, the best skiing in my mind is gonna be on the groomers because they've had cold enough conditions that the snow is firm and when they groom it at night and it settles, it'll be corduroy in the morning. So when I see that, I know, hey, I'm gonna be spending most of my day on groomers. I'm gonna be looking for Super G Hills. If I know it's gonna be kind of a hard pack day, I'm just gonna take my Atomic Mavericks. Um, if I was on the East Coast, I'd be looking at something like uh, like a Redster or something that was like more narrow underfoot. But on the West Coast, yeah, I'm saying, hey, today's gonna be a groomer day. I'm just gonna go out and enjoy some laps. And I, and I still love that. I still have a blast carving. Yeah, if it's a hard pack day, I'm just gonna kinda go into that knowing. And you can usually tell, especially out west, like the sky is so big that you can kinda see weather coming from a ways away. Yeah, that's the ski I would pack for that day. It's just like, okay, there's really not gonna be any change. I'm pretty positive just that my all mountain Atomic Mavericks are gonna cover me for that day. The next condition I would look at is if it's been cold and then we have precipitation on the way, it's likely gonna be snow. I will bring my powder skis. And that's when, you know, you've not only ha maybe had snow going on for the last day, but there's snow in the forecast. You can always bring your all mountain skis in case it's bad. But in the case of the powder skis I got, the Solon QST 106, those skis still do well enough carving that I could have fun on a nice wide open hill. I don't have to make the slalom turns like I would with my Atomic Mavericks. I could make some nice wide open turns. It wouldn't be ideal if I was stuck with the QST 106s on the trail, but I got them because I still think Solomon has a nice carving ski. It's gonna be as good as the Maverick, no, but even if I mess up and even if the snow doesn't come in, I'm still okay with skiing on those skis. If I know that there's kind of snow on the forecast or it's actively snow, Knowing, that's when I'm gonna bring my powder skis. I'm kind of in a different camp of most people. Some people have like designated like 110, 120 powder skis. I have a 106 because I still like carving and I still think it's enough flotation for me. And what's nice about the Solomon QST is it doesn't have any metal, it just has wood. It still feels firm and still carves well. Yeah, if I have snow on the forecast, in the next 24 hours, or if it's actively snowing, that's when I would bring those skis. Now the next condition that people don't really talk about, but I think is important, is kind of the more adverse conditions. So let's say that it's been really warm and wet and we're gonna get a freeze overnight. That's when you wanna make sure you have something with sharp edges. That's when I would want like a crud cutter ski. The other condition that you might get is the opposite. If it's been cold and hard packed and then you're gonna get some warmer weather, you're gonna get some of that sludge, some of that kind of heavy mashed potato snow. That's again when I would want like a really heavy crud cutter ski, a K2 mind bender, a vocal mantra. That is the kind of ski I would want for those conditions is like something that can really break through the crud can kind of sink down and cut through. If you've had powder, but it's been like six or seven days and it's gotten warm during the day and then cold at night, especially like it does out here in Idaho, that's when you're gonna get that real chop off trail. You can ski on it, it's not great. And ideally what you would have is that the groomers would come in during the day, kind of set that corduroy and then it would freeze overnight. But that doesn't always happen all over the mountain. And if you're off trail, it certainly doesn't happen. If I was gonna have a third pair of skis, I would want kind of a crud cutter vocal mantra, K2 mind bender to get just get through that stuff. Those are the three main conditions. 
So in my mind, what I would ski on would be three main types of skis. Um, I just have two of them, and that covers me for the majority of the time anyway, and I just kind of get by the other days. But here are the three main types of skis I would have. All mountain skis that carve well, that are about 88 width underfoot. A powder ski, like my QST 106 for flotation, and a crud cutter. If you're in the Pacific Northwest, this is probably your daily driver, something like a Vocal Mantra or K2 Mindbender, something that's gonna kinda sink into the snow and cut through and kinda rail through adverse conditions. For the first ski, for the Atomic Maverick, something that's carving oriented and all mountain ski, I would say that those are two types of weather conditions. One, it was warm and then it got cold and basically overnight, the snow refroze and the groomers came through and made nice corduroy. Those are good for carving skis. If it's cold and it stayed cold and you had no new precipitation, that's when you want the carving ski. You wanna be able to kind of stay on that stuff that's getting groomed out and be able to carve. It's also gonna be okay if you get a light dusting. It's still gonna be fun to go in, but this is when there's no real new snow. It's just kind of cold on cold and you're riding those groomed runs. Then you have your powder ski. That's when it's cold and it's snowing overnight and it stays cold. That's gonna be a fun ski for you for most of the day. That's kind of the perfect conditions. That's when you've got big snow and you're not worried so much about carving, but more about flotation. That's when you want that powder ski. It never hurts if you wanna keep your powder skis in your car and you're not worried about security or anything. If you have any kind of snow forecast, you can throw them in there, so don't worry about that. And then finally, the crud cutter. When it was warm and then it got cold and there wasn't good grooming, that's when you want a crud cutter. And on the opposite side, if it's cold and then it's gonna get warm throughout the day, something like Mount Hood in the summer, you'll see that a lot. Something like spring skiing, you'll see that a lot. That's when you want something that's gonna kind of rail through as the snow gets softer and those lighter carving skis are gonna get kind of hung up on them. Same for powder skis. That flotation, while it's good in the winter in the light fluffy snow, they can get really dragged behind with some of that heavier mashed potato snow. So those are my three types of skis and the three conditions that I would have them in. Now right now, where I live in Idaho, we get such good snow and we have a lot of wind and that wind kind of keeps that snow fresh, right? Like even if it does get a little bit of warm, it keeps so much air into the snow, it keeps it so fluffy that I really don't need a crud cutter ski unless it's like last year where we're still skiing into like May. Then yeah, there were a couple days where like a crud cutter ski would have been good. Or I, you know, reviewed those vocal mantras and I thought they did great in those kind of conditions. I think I called it the king of spring skiing. Same for the K2 Mindbender that I tested up at Mount Hood. Those did really well. But the majority of the time, you don't really need that. And my Atomic Maverick still skied fine. It's just like the very, very end of the season. And usually our home mountain closes by then anyway. Last year was just kind of an anomaly. Myself, I just have those two types of skis. The Atomic Maverick 88 Ti, which is an all mountain ski and can kind of go anywhere. You know, if I get a surprise dusting of snow, I can still go out and enjoy it. It's once I get into like the two or three feet of snow that the Solomon QST 106s are just like so much better. But you know, if I'm up skiing and there was no snow and it was not actively snowing when I went up and I get a surprise dusting, the Mavericks are perfectly suitable. I know a lot of people talk about changing skis like golf clubs and if you wanted to do it perfectly, you could. But for most people, that's not really realistic, honestly. What I do is I just look at it. Is it actively snowing? Okay, the QST 106s are gonna go on. Has it not snowed and it's not gonna snow for a while? I'll just bring the Atomic Mavericks and if I get a surprise dusting, then great. So anyway, those are the snow conditions and when I bring which skis up, uh, sorry again for the car shooting, but you know, life happens. <laughs> uh, and as always, just thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.